Hello, welcome again to another video of the Cat's Garage. So today, uh, well, obviously I'm in the uh, high country again and just doing a quick top five favorite cars that I have uh, either owned or wish I had owned. So uh, either from experiences or stuff like that, cars that I've been in. So not cars where, oh, if I had the money, I would go out and buy it and stuff like that. I'm not gonna you know, sit there and say something along the lines of Lamborghini because, well, one, I've never driven a Lamborghini. So uh, starting off here, uh, we're gonna start with uh, number five on my list of cars that if I could have again or have in my garage or something that I have at least driven or experienced as such as being a passenger in it, stuff like that. So, so number five on my list currently would be uh, if I could get one, would be a uh, Porsche 911. So pretty much doesn't matter what year or anything like that. I know there's, you know, the purists who are like, oh, well, it, it needs to be air-cooled Porsche, you know, all the uh, water-cooled Porsches, they're blah, crap, and stuff like that. Uh, I have friends who are just like that. I mean, if, if it's not air-cooled, it's not, it's not a true driving Porsche, driving machine, even though the modern Porsche is completely obliterate the uh, the old Porsches on the track and stuff like that but that's not the point if uh, if I was able to uh, have five cars in my garage I would like to have a Porsche 911 uh, so number four on my list is the uh, Dodge Challenger so while I owned a 2009 uh, Dodge Challenger SRT8, hence the SRT jacket and all that stuff. Uh, I got all kinds of nice little perks when I got my car. Uh, I had bought it brand new. It was the first six-speed manual transmission V8 car from Dodge in freaking forever, I think since the 70s. So uh, it was also uh, one of the first two cars to actually come into Virginia Beach. So I pretty much got it as soon as it came off the semi. Uh, awesome car loved it I mean yeah it's big it's heavy but I mean just a fantastic car Dodge hit that one out of the park I loved that car oh speaking of SRT there's a Jeep SRT8 but anyway uh, so yeah uh, and speaking of Jeep SRT8s number three on my list Jeep SRT8 while I haven't owned one I've actually been in a couple and my best experience in a Jeep SRT8 was when I did buy my Challenger I got what was known as the SRT experience so the SRT experience is uh, you meet up at a racetrack that Dodge rents out for the day and you go there you get put in groups and everything else and you get to drive every single SRT vehicle well the year prior uh, there was somebody who wrecked the Viper, so they said nobody will get to drive the Viper However, you get to go actually race around the track in the Viper with a professional race car driver and That was only for a few lucky people so some people you know got to do that and everything else and and uh, I'll just had to give a thumbs up to a guy with a lowered Silverado back there looked uh, pretty pretty cool but anyway um so this SRT experience, uh, got to go do all that, and my uh, my whole thing was is I pulled the uh, ticket to actually get to go in the Jeep SRT8 and have a professional race car driver drive it around, and this was at Virginia International Raceway. So we got to do, I wanna say it was like the 3.6 or 3.7 mile road course. And we also got to, I personally got to race the Charger SRT8, uh, 300 SRT8, and a Challenger SRT8 around that course. And as long as uh, it was a kind of a tandem race type thing, so you had a professional driver in a car ahead of you, and then there was two other, you, you and another person that was your partner for this experience got to drive a car each. And so there's three cars and you followed a professional race car driver, and as long as you kept the gap similar between each car, then, uh, you would just keep going faster and faster and faster around the track until all your laps were used up. So me and the guy that I was with, 
uh, who happened to be a secret service agent and all that stuff. And, and I'm, I, I'm military, so we kind of hit it off pretty well right off the bat and everything else. And, and uh, yeah, we were right on that professional race car drivers, but the entire time. And grant, granted, you know, we started off, you know, decent and we kind of told them our experiences with cars and racing and everything else. And so we started off uh, doing a pretty good clip and by the end of it, you know, in the straightaways, we're doing 135, 140 miles an hour, you know, braking properly, apexes, all that, anyway, all that other crap. So great part about that experience was I got to actually get in the Jeep SRT8 and this race car driver's like, I'm gonna show you what this vehicle, even though it's big, can actually do. And I was never white knuckled, but talk about a vehicle that, I mean, I thought I was on a pretty good level of uh, driving around a racetrack and everything else. And this guy was taking this Jeep SRT8 and I mean, yeah, he took it to a whole new level. I was just like, oh wow, this is awesome. So, so something to aspire to. And this was back in 2000 and, uh, 2010 when, actually no, I, correction, it was 2009 when I did my, uh, my experience. But, but anyway, so Jeep SRT8 makes my list at number three. Would love to have one of those and then uh so number two on my list so number two on my list is the 3000 gt vr4 so when i was in college i uh i had a 1983 chevrolet monte carlo with the 305 all that stuff and complete dog i mean for v8 i think it pushed out maybe a hundred and 50 crank horsepower or some crap like that it would it was horrible but uh great it was a fun car i had a lot of fun in it it's the longest i've ever owned a car i owned that car for seven years but uh at that point in time i uh i decided you know what it was try time to trade up uh this was in 1999 i got myself a 1992 3000 gt vr4 and holy balls that car was fast so uh, the person who owned it before me was a doctor. <laughs> Funny story. I found his information and I tried calling him. So he answers the phone and he's like, Dr. So-and-so. And I was like, hey, my name's Chris and I believe I just bought your 3000 GT. And he's like, I don't want to talk about that car. And he hung up the phone. <laughs> and I'm just like, wow, okay. So I'm thinking either that guy... <laughs> had to sell it in a divorce or something and he just was pissed off that he had to get rid of the car or something but uh i got a i got a smoking deal on the car so i was pretty uh pretty happy with it so anyway long story short i had that car for two years i ended up i was still in college uh i broke my leg couldn't work couldn't pay the uh, car note on it and had to sell it so and not to mention uh it was a 92 it had the five speed transmission in it so it had uh, anybody who knows anything about 3000 GTs or the equivalent of the Dodge Stealth knows that uh, second and third gear synchros in those cars go out pretty quickly, especially if you're uh, if you're romping around on on it. And uh, which I will admit I did a lot. Uh, but that being said. Uh, once the gear, uh, second gear and third gear synchros went out, I had to had to get it rebuilt. And don't let a Mitsubishi dealership ever tell you that they can't rebuild that transmission. That's total bunk. And I had it rebuilt, but it, unfortunately, it cost me three grand, which was still cheaper than the uh, five point five, well, five thousand five hundred dollars that Mitsubishi wanted for a brand new transmission. So I ended up going the route and had a guy in my hometown that. Uh, my family knew end up uh, rebuilding it because that's what he did he just rebuilt transmissions but anyway that's number two on my list awesome car loved it wish i still had one in my garage and number one on my list of cars i would love to have in my garage uh i would have to sit there and say well i'm a huge uh, Subaru fan and everyone might see some of my videos about my STIs and my Forester that I converted STI and everything else um, While I loved all those they don't make my top five So my number one car that I wish I had in my garage would be the uh, Maserati 
uh, Gran Turismo. Uh, or what? Because, uh, no, not the Gran Turismo, the uh, Quattro Porte or something like that. So in 2009 as well, I got to, uh, with my job, I got to go do some stuff and I ended up going to Detroit uh, and there's a guy in Detroit, awesome guy, he owns his own business and everything else. Uh, he's like first name basis with the owner of the Ferrari dealership. And so when we, sh so when I showed up, uh, he, uh, showed up in a Maserati Quattroporte and, and, uh, we went out in that thing and had a blast. And then when I was leaving, uh, he's like, well, here's the keys. You're driving us to the airport. And he took me to some pretty cool areas and stuff like that. Like, Hey, go, go this way, go this way. Oh well, yeah. We're taking the long way to the airport and no kidding. That car, the, the sound of a Ferrari engine is just amazing. Uh, I have to give it to Ferrari. I, granted, I wouldn't want the maintenance coming with that Ferrari motor, but uh, it would be pretty sweet to have one of those uh, in the in the garage. I mean, the interior was... I thought the interior on this thing's nice. There's nothing that compares to Italian it interiors where everything is suede covered. I mean, the A pillar, C pillar, everything's suede covered. I mean, it was awesome. But, but anyway, that was an awesome experience. Uh, I don't know if sales will ever watch this that's the guy that had it but uh so if sales is uh ever watching my videos or anything like that thanks for that experience it was a blast getting to drive that and getting you know see tiger stadium and staying downtown at the detroit athletic center all that kind of stuff so great experience great car i enjoyed it uh, a lot of people are like well maserati why not have a ferrari well that's because i've never driven a ferrari or i've never been in an actual ferrari so once again this list is cars I've either had, cars I've either been in and had experience with, meaning I've either driven it or I've been in a passenger in the setting where I've gotten to see the performance of that car, not just, oh, uh, someone picked me up out of the kindness of their heart and they gave me a ride from here to McDonald's and they never once showed me what the car could do. So, so that's my top five experiences or not experiences, but cars that I would like to see in my garage someday. Uh, but Leave uh, comments, questions, anything else down below on what your top five would be. And once again, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Uh, we'll keep the content coming, and it'll be a little bit of everything. So once the uh, car shows car show season starts up here in uh, the Omaha area, I'll start hitting that up. Uh, start making videos of that, talking to people about their cars, maybe uh, getting to uh, do some uh, reviews on cars and everything else. Uh, we'll also be reviewing tools, products, stuff that you should probably have in your garage, especially if you like to turn your own wrenches. And if anything else, uh, yeah, we'll just keep videos coming up uh, on the cat's garage. You know, I'll be looking at the little cats, Alexander and Tristan, uh, especially when they get out in the garage. It's like, oh boy, what's going to happen this time? So if anything, uh, once again, thanks for watching. Appreciate that. And please uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, let's try to... Let's try to get the uh, views and everything else up. And uh, the more I see uh, subscribing, the more comments and everything else, I try to reply to all that. And uh, we'll just keep the content coming. All right. Thanks, all. And drive safe. Have a good one.